Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review on this Sunday morning, the second Sunday in the month of September. Praise God, the 12th of the month. Again, thank you for joining our Sunday School Review. As I noted last week, I love the scripture so much, I'll repeat it this week. Taste and see, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Psalm 34 and eight. I thank God for today, for the victories, the promises, hallelujah, and the triumphs that we will make as people of God in this day, in this 12th day of September. Praise the Lord. The topic of our discussion today is from generation to generation. Again, the topic of our discussion, the topic of our focus will be from generation to generation. Uh, lesson number two, um, our Bible basis, the content of our discussion will be found in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 15, and the fourth chapter, verses 20 through 20. Seven. I thank God for the leaders of Unity Church of God in Christ, our pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers, and our First Lady, First Lady Charlene Rogers. We salute you on this Sunday morning and thank you. Hallelujah. Also, viewing audience, thank you for your decision and choice to join us today, be it Facebook, YouTube, or you there in person, praise God. We thank you for joining today. To Sunday School Superintendent Deacon Joe Daniels and his companion, Sister Annie Daniels, thank you for everything that you do, making it possible for us to speak to literature, share the good news by way of Sunday School. Praise God. And certainly last but not least, I thank God weekly for the opportunity that he has extended to me, praise the Lord, to share the good news of Jesus by way of Sunday school. Our Bible truth, our Bible application and Bible learning are as follows today. Our Bible truth to live life to the fullest. We must make good choices and keep a righteous path. Again, Bible truth, there is really no explanation to it because it speaks the truth. <laughs> Candidly delivers a truthful statement to live life to the fullest, to live life to every possible potential that God gives us on a daily basis. We must make good choices and keep righteous path or a righteous path. Our Bible application, this is what we are to apply. Use Proverbs, the fourth chapter, as a blueprint for positive living. Use it as a blueprint. Use it as a roadmap for positive living. And then finally, our Bible learning, to learn the instructions of Proverbs, to learn, to practice, to implement the directions, the instructions, the guidance that is captured in that fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs. Again, we want to gain the truth. We want to apply and we want to learn what the scripture is outlining for us today. Praise God. Our memory verse is captured from Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse, Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. That is Proverbs 4, 13, the King James Version. The New International Version is follow, reads as follows. It's right there in view. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Praise God. Our, our memory verses conveying the point, the instruction. Do everything you can to hold on to good instruction. 
praise God. Do not let it go because this instruction is, hallelujah, your life. Your life is contingent upon godly instruction. And we will explore the specifics of that memory verse to you and I, the believer, as we continue our review of this Sunday's lesson. Praise God. Our memory verse notes, in this present day, life continues, hallelujah, let me clarify, life moves and continues on a consistent basis. <laughs> our reality, our existence is life in motion. Today, I'm sharing it can be good or bad. <laughs> bad or even worse at times. Hallelujah. But with God, all things are better. It is simply a decision and our choice we must make. All right, lesson commentary notes, decision today is a lifestyle, a way of life, a way of thinking. People of God, when we are asleep, life is moving forward without us, without our input, without our action. Again, life is continuously moving. And because it is in motion, we need God's help. We need God's direction at all times. Again, life is consistently, continuously moving. And while we are asleep, <laughs> resting and providing, hallelujah, nourishment for this old body to continue, life is moving without us, thus the need, thus the necessity, thus the direction for God to lead, for God to guide us as we go from generation to generation. Praise God, be it whomever in our life, our children, our grandchildren, our nieces, nephews, everything that flows from us, our blood, our generations, our livelihood, everything that flows from us, the blood that flows through us, hallelujah, generation to generation. Although we may not be alive, generation to generation, Hallelujah. And the best way, the best direction, the best instruction we can give those and pass on to those that will follow is, hallelujah, to be grounded, rooted in the direction that God provides, in the direction that the blood of Jesus flows. And that is our purpose for today's lesson, to simply provide insight and direction, to simply give you instruction, as a memory verse has noted, to hold on to the instruction, don't let it go, and to guard it well, because your life is dependent upon it, the consistency, hallelujah, the foundation, the structure of your life, is based upon the instruction and how we receive it, how we follow it. Praise God and we thank God for the method of how information is shared. We thank God for our family. We thank God for our leaders. We thank God for the people that we believe, we know, and we trust in because the information they share with us, the instructions they share with us and pass to us is considered valuable. Why? Because we know from experience, we know from witnessing what these individuals have done, how they have executed, 
and the trials, tribulations that they have experienced as they go through life. Hallelujah. This is the insight that we will receive today in this lesson in the book of Proverbs from Solomon, King Solomon. In this present day, as I said, life moves in motion regardless if you are ready or not. To ensure that you're ready at all times, it is best to receive instruction from somebody who has experienced, from someone who is traveling or has traveled the path that you are on. Hallelujah. Or traveled on your current path. Praise God. Anyone on a journey needs instruction. Again, just a little insight uh, 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 to speak to the purpose of today's lesson, to make sure we understand that it is to you and I, regardless of your position, regardless of who you are, regardless of how long you've been in church, regardless of how long you have not been in church, this lesson is applicable to us all. In a journey, on a journey, normally instruction is required. Hallelujah. There are often times when we go to purchase an item, whatever that item may be. And many instances it is to possibly enhance our home, enhance our life existence, enhance the uh, 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 way our vehicle moves, how it sounds. Instruction is normally required with any uh, 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 thing, any new path, any new journey, anything we are attempting to deploy that is new. Anything new requires instruction and our direction. Praise God. People of God, it behooves us. <laughs> we who have never traveled this path we call life. We, you and I are pilgrims. Pilgrims is a uh, means one who journeys in a foreign land. We who have never made this journey. Hallelujah. We must seek God as we move. We must seek God in motion. Praise God. And our lesson gives insight today on how you and I, the believer, can receive that insight. Praise God. It provides practical, concise direction by way of the book of Proverbs, that fourth chapter, via instruction King Solomon is providing to his offspring. Our lesson aim clearly notes today, by the end of this lesson, we will explain how teachings from the proverb, the fourth chapter of proverb, promote wise living. We will consider living wisely and following a straight path. And finally, we will develop a strategy for market, for making good choices and living a godly life. I do like the symbols that have been outlined. We are in a setting to learn, hallelujah. We are in a position where we are learning and we are receiving explanation how to promote wise living, how to capture the qualities of, how to implement wise living, not only for ourselves, but those, as you often hear me say, we often hear Pastor Roger say, those in our community, those who surround us, those we know, and those who we meet will meet in the future. And then finally consider, excuse me, we also must consider. Consider is <laughs> living wisely, to think about something before we move forward to think about a decision 
before we move forward to consider when we see this in our lesson aim what i'm displaying before you is a house hallelujah it is a house our physical house and i'll even say our body the temple of god any decisions that we make anything that we consider any direction we consider taking it impacts who we are this physical house we call our body as well as the physical house that we lay in at times we lay our head any decision we make while in motion impacts our very existence therefore we must consider because consideration impacts our foundation we must consider as we move forward how we are walking how exactly we are in motion and if our motion is productive hallelujah in order to ensure that we're on a productive positive righteous path it is necessary to come to sunday school it's necessary to read his word it's necessary to pray it is necessary to come to church on a weekly basis it is necessary to hear bible study it is necessary to hear the gospel message from your pastor on a weekly basis because when we listen when we read when we explore we develop hallelujah we develop we impact the mind we impact the heart hallelujah as we read as we listen as we receive we're able to define strategies methods and ways for us to make good choices and to live a godly life it is necessary to re listen hear and receive in order to develop and not only to develop but to develop in a positive way hallelujah to ensure our choices are good to ensure our life that we live is godly that is the purpose of our lesson aim hallelujah I challenge you today to improve your life experience by following the instructions outlined in the book of Proverbs. Life is not always hallelujah, howdy, howdy, and always rejoicing, but in Jesus there is hope, there is direction, hallelujah, to get you to the other side to get you beyond those times when life can be challenging. Glory to God. The reality of it is we are receiving instruction today so that we can positively move forward, hallelujah, in a purposeful motion. Explain, consider, develop. Just want to highlight it a little bit more. When you explain, we're a goal today, my goal, the lesson commentary and weekly Bible study services and Sunday school to make it clear, to make it understandable how knowing Jesus, consulting him and his father will enhance your very existence. We want you to consider, to ponder. This is information that we're sharing, but the choice is yours. As we shared in Bible study on two, Wednesday evening, the goal is to make sure that you're knowledge, knowledgeable and informed so that any choice, any decision you make in life is profitable for you, positive for you, your family, and those in your community and then when you develop you grow or you are caused to grow when you develop you become more mature 
when you be develop, you become more advanced. You are bigger. You are better with development. Praise God. And again, development and strategy can only come when we read, when we listen, when we receive, and when we apply. Hallelujah. Today's lesson, as I have referenced a few times, gives insight into a father's direction to his son, to his offspring. This also applies again to you and I. Today, God is giving direction to us by way of the book of Proverbs, by way of Solomon. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. We are God's offspring. And as critical, as important, as fundamental as it was for Solomon to share his instructions with his son, it is also just as important and imperative for us to listen, to receive, because God too is sharing with us, his offspring. He loves us and he wants us to be successful in both the natural and spiritual, hallelujah, life we live. Last week we reviewed the book of Proverbs chapters one and two specifically as our lesson was in found in that third chapter. Again, want to capture the fact that Proverbs 1 and 2 provided an outline in theory as to the content of the entire book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. The instruction and wisdom outlined in this book can be used, as referenced last week, as a compass, as a guide. It will ensure that we will not veer off course easily and are not at all. It will act God's direction, God's guidance, seeking God's wisdom will act as an anchor to align us, to pull us back, hallelujah, to a place where we are centered. Praise God. Proverbs 1, again applying to all the book in its entirety. Although we're dissecting different chapters as we continue our this lesson series, the book in its entirety speaks to gaining wisdom and instruction, understanding words of insight, restrive, excuse me, receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right, doing what is just, doing what is fair, providing insight and help for those who do not know, those who do not have knowledge, those who do not have experience. That can apply to those who are young. Hallelujah. That can apply to those are who, who are old. The book of Proverbs will provide guidance and concise direction for you to move forward in a positive motion. Hallelujah. <laughs> we talked about Proverbs last week, but I did fail to capture the meaning of the word proverb. Proverb is a short, pithy saying, brief but full of substance. In general use, stating a general truth are a piece of advice. A, a short saying used to express an obvious truth. God's instruction, people, may be brief. The instructions, the guidance given through the book of Proverbs may be brief in their sentence and word structure. Hallelujah. But when God provides direction, when God provides instruction, that instruction lasts far an eternity. He is Alpha 
and omega, the beginning and the end, and anything he says in between applies for now through eternity, thus giving advice, thus seeking his instruction, thus seeking his wisdom last from generation to generation. So as we pass on God's insight, as we share God's instruction, hallelujah, his word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His instruction lives far beyond our witness. His instruction lives far beyond our testimony. His instruction lives far beyond giving guidance to, giving way to our ancestors and those who will come after us. Hallelujah, God's instruction, God's wisdom, God's direction again is life sustaining for us and for generations to come. Hallelujah, I thank God for his word, providing practical everyday insight so that you and I can understand that he cares for us here on earth he cares for our quality of life, our success here on earth and in the world to come. Instruction, hallelujah. Solomon was providing instruction, direction, guidance. He wanted to give his son something to deal with the reality that he was living in. Reality is the world or state of things as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic or national idea or theme. We are speaking about the reality that we are in, the reality that you and I exist in this world of quarantine, in this world of pestilence, as was referred to by a preacher the other night. Hallelujah, COVID-19, disease, etc., is pestilence, but God gives us direction in our current reality. But we must ask him, hallelujah. The scripture tells us if you lack wisdom, Ask it from God and he will give it to you freely. Although this lesson is based upon Proverbs 4, it speaks to us. It speaks to our current reality. It speaks to today, September 12th, 2021. Hallelujah. Part one of today's review two paths, two different outcomes. Again, part one, two paths, two different outcomes captured in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 15. Hallelujah. Two-way street. <laughs> Our lesson indicates that, our lesson commentary, excuse me, outlines the direction that Solomon was sharing as information on what happens when you go down a two-way street and the options that are provided to you as you navigate on or in that path. Hallelujah. We call it a path or a lane. A path or a lane of wisdom or a path or lane of wickedness. Which will you follow? Which path will you at eventually end up in? What will happen to you as you, hallelujah, head out on your journey? God created us, all of us, you and I, hallelujah. He is no respective person. As a result, God created us and gave us an awesome privilege. That privilege is choice. That privilege is the opportunity to consider 
and to make decisions which are seemingly best for us. Hallelujah. With choice, God also gave us the awesome opportunity to be fully responsible for our decisions and actions. Again, choice. We're responsible for every decision. We're responsible for every action. Hallelujah. But God gives insight to ensure, to make sure, and if you like and so choose that you are informed, hallelujah, that you are knowledgeable about the decisions that you make. To ensure Solomon, hallelujah, Solomon wanted to ensure, let me clarify, that his children, his offspring had insight into life, the reality of it and what was necessary, what is necessary, what steps they must follow to, hallelujah, guarantee that their life is somewhat, hallelujah, somewhat, uh, 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 something that they can strategize about, they can purposely align and look for a positive outcome. Hallelujah. Solomon was providing strategy. Solomon was providing a roadmap for life to his children. He outlined what he had done. <laughs> he could speak to his children, and they listened because Solomon was not an absent father. He wasn't an absentee father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's make something perfectly clear. When we give advice, when others come to us seeking advice, they're coming to us based upon who we are, and they're listening. Hallelujah. We give advice, yes, and people come to us and seek advice, but the consistency in how they listen, in how they receive is based upon our experience and how successful we have navigated our own courses in life. Hallelujah. Solomon was not afraid and could share his experiences because, again, he was a father who was present. He was a father who experienced success and life and someone his children would listen to. Hallelujah. In order to give advice, we must align our life accordingly. Hallelujah. We must align our lives accordingly. His children were able to respect him and his experiences. Therefore, they were able to listen to his instruction. This lesson will ensure as we move forward. Hallelujah. There may have been a time in past. It may be present right now where you're not in a position to give advice. Hallelujah. But you're certainly in a position to seek it and to receive it. We are not all Solomons, but hallelujah, God places us in a position and ensures our path may be that one day. It is okay to be hallelujah like a son, to be like a daughter where you are in need of instruction, whatever your situation, Whatever your path today, be it the instructor or the person receiving the instruction, hallelujah, God is looking out for you. God wants a positive, hallelujah, outcome for your life here in this present world and the world to come. It is his will that none be lost. Hallelujah. But it is imperative in order 
for none to be lost that we follow instruction, we follow direction. When we do not follow, we get lost. It's as simple as that. Again, following God's instruction will ensure we are in a position, we are in a path of positive motion. Hallelujah. Proverbs 10 and the fifth, excuse me, 10 through the 15th verse in that fourth chapter, Solomon speaks to and gives advice specific to listening and receiving. God's word is continuously talking to us. However, we must hear, listen, and receive. When we listen and receive godly instruction, glory to God, Solomon highlights, the years of thy life shall be many, but it is contingent upon us listening and receiving. Hallelujah. He gives insight to his son, his offspring. Listen and receive. If you listen and receive, the end result will be the years of thy life shall be me. Hallelujah. There is a benefit to listening. There is a benefit to receiving the instruction of God. Hallelujah. Your years <laughs> shall be many. Are you listening to the instruction of God? Are you receiving the instruction of God? In that 10th through 15th verse, Solomon also outlines an example. Solomon is an example. Hallelujah to his son. Jesus is our perfect example. Hallelujah. We are again looking at a conversation and instruction from a father to a son, but we can equate this, hallelujah, God giving his son instruction, his son coming down, giving his life, living this life, living in our reality, in this earth, hallelujah, conquering death, hell, and the grave, and now on the right hand of the Father, acting as an intermediary between you and I, navigating us, giving us instruction. Canada, don't go that way. Sister Bilbo, don't go that way. Brother Dialogue, do not go that way. He is continuously looking out for us to ensure that our path is a path of righteousness, but it is contingent upon us and our choice to seek him, our choice to receive, and our choice to listen. We can model our behavior after the teachings and concepts in the book of Proverbs, as well as the steps of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is our perfect example. Hallelujah. We know him. We have experienced him. He has saved us. He has touched our mind. He has touched our heart. He has allowed us to stop some things that we used to do and pick up new things. Hallelujah. He is a habit breaker. He sees to our needs. We know he cares about us because in every instance, hallelujah, 100% factual in every instance, when Jesus comes into your life, things are better. With this same concept, in this same theory, in this same train of thought, Solomon's son is able to receive what his father is sharing with him because he knows his father cares for him. He knows his father loves him. He knows his father will go above and beyond to make sure that his life is full, is plentiful. Hallelujah. Again, I must reiterate, 
Solomon has nothing on God. God is our father and it is his will, hallelujah, <laughs> that we have a good end. He knew us before we were formed in the belly. He knew us, hallelujah, and he is always looking out for us, thus him sending his son as an example, an example for us to mirror and follow, an example that we will not question. Same today for Solomon. Solomon's son was to receive instruction from his father who was a proven example of what following godly wisdom, following godly instruction will do, how it will benefit those who follow. Hallelujah. From their own witness of his success, his children can determine if they will follow. His children can make an informed, knowledgeable decision to listen to, to receive what their father is sharing. Hallelujah. Solomon's success is documented and proven. Glory to God. We also have documented proof of the impact of God on this earth, the reality of our existence by way of his son, Jesus Christ. From the book of Genesis to Revelation, it is documented of how he impacts our way, how he impacts our direction, hallelujah, based upon his experience. Glory to God, he healed the woman with an issue of blood and based upon that experience, we know he'll do the same thing for us. He cast out legion, a multitude of devils, and we know he will deliver and set us free based upon that experience. Hallelujah, again, Solomon is sharing instruction just as God does in his word. Hallelujah, from Genesis to Revelation, although our emphasis and focus today is that fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah, documented living proof. You, the believer, can tell and share what God has done for you in your present reality. Hallelujah, glory to God. He is a way maker. In the midst of a storm, he provides direction. In the midst of a cool rain, he gives direction. On a nice cold day, when you cannot see, hallelujah, sometimes they call it clear ice. When there is when there are treacherous roads all around us, but we cannot see clearly, he sees, he gives instruction, he gives guidance, hallelujah. Just as Solomon was admonishing his child to follow, Jesus is doing the same today by outlining, hallelujah, directions and instruction in the book of Proverbs by way of King Solomon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So regardless of how you're in motion, <laughs> sometimes we're running, sometimes we're walking, sometimes we're even making small steps. You can always stay on course when you seek direction, when you receive direction from God. Hallelujah. Because in life, it is necessary at times to move at a different pace as well as to change pace. But God takes us through each of those changes as we shift gears, hallelujah, God leads us and guides us. <laughs> Sometimes people of God, I go through things and it is difficult and the impact seems like it is forever. 
Oh my God, will this trouble, will this trial, will this scenario pass? How long must I go through it? But I thank God for who he is because he expedites the time or he makes the timeline bearable in the process of our going through because he's mighty. Hallelujah. <laughs> Although we might go down a path although he leads us in a certain direction he is going to make sure that he does everything possible that we are vigilant and we remain on course as long as we follow hallelujah and regardless if we're running skipping or trotting or barely taking a step he is with us. His experience is guiding us. Hallelujah. In that fourth chapter, those verses 10 through 15, he has given direction and insight to listen, to receive. Hallelujah. He has provided himself as an example, something his children can use to go by his success they can see it they have viewed it they've watched it and they can mirror it hallelujah he's giving them encouragement to do so but also referring to the fact that they must apply what he is saying apply it take hold to instruction just don't listen to what i'm saying Receiving is good. Acknowledging that you need instruction is also great. But are you applying the instruction and direction you receive from God? Again, Solomon was noting it is important to listen. It is important to receive. It is also important and imperative to view him and his instruction and his example. But in everything, hallelujah, in everything, we are to get an under, a thorough understanding. Are you applying what you are receiving? Are you listening? Are you applying the instructions of God to your life? Or are you just listening and moving forward in your own direction? <laughs> you must apply instruction. What is instruction if you don't apply it? Have you ever put something together without reading in the instructions first? Have you ever made it to an unfamiliar destination without any direction? We will not make it through life without applying instruction. We will not make it through life if we do not apply the direction we receive from God. We will be lost. In our reality, we are absolutely lost without God. Lost in this world, aimlessly traveling through with no direction nowhere to go, nothing to look forward to, just living to live. Hallelujah. And people of God, we must remember we are living to live again. Glory to God. Proverbs 4, dissecting that 10th through that 15th verse of that fourth chapter. Solomon outlines the fact that there is wars, warning a hazard sign, warning, hazard, do not enter. <laughs> He's providing instruction, experienced instruction to tell his offspring, do not enter. This is a hazard designation. This is a hazard warning. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Hallelujah nor the way of evil men. Stay off the road and 
Hallelujah. Stay off the wicked road. Stay off the evil way. Those are two streets to stay clear from. Steer clear from these. Wherever you're driving to, walking to, heading to, steer clear of the wicked road and the evil way. Don't go to them. Hallelujah. Avoid them. Do what is necessary to make a U-turn before you approach these two roadways. It's a warning sign. It's a hazard sign. Again, I must reiterate, Solomon was sharing from experience. Avoid at all costs the wicked road and the evil way. Do what is necessary, people of God, to make a U-turn before you approach. Hallelujah. Listen to the warning. Heed the warning and avoid evil and evil men, evil thoughts, and evil ways. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Part two, practice makes perfect. Part two, practice makes perfect. Proverbs, that fourth chapter, verses 20 through 27. Practice is the actual application or use of an idea, belief, or method as opposed to the theories relating to it. You're actually applying something to. You're not saying in theory, but you're actually applying it to. You are living by. Solomon provides instruction and reiterates with emphasis the importance of existing in our current reality. He was speaking to his son, his offspring, about navigating through the realities of that time. But as noted, God's word is the same then, today, and tomorrow, and or forever. Therefore, what Solomon shared in that book, inspired by God, is applicable to you and I today. Hallelujah. Listen. He says, listen. Look, I've given you the instruction, but I want to reiterate the fact. I want you to know, son, offspring, child, listen. Pay attention to what I'm saying. I just ain't talking to you, but I'm sharing my most inner thoughts. I'm sharing what I know is and will chart a path of success for you, just as Solomon was Hallelujah, truthful and genuine in his guidance and instruction to his son. God is as genuine to us today. He is our father. He cares about us. He cares about us in this present world. Hallelujah. Oh, God. And he loves us as we love him. His love is even greater, hallelujah, because he loved us before he, we loved him. Excuse me. Again, people of God, we are pilgrims in this life. It is not uncommon for strangers to suffer forms of persecution in strange lands. Solomon was giving insight in to his offspring about how to navigate. And everything is not going to be great and gravy at all times, as I referenced earlier. They, we who live godly, shall suffer persecution. We are in a spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. We have an enemy out there, and his name is the devil, and he does not want us to navigate this life, this path successful so that we will reign with Jesus. We will make it to the end. That is not his goal for us. His goal is to stop us by any means necessary. Thus Solomon giving insight, thus me reiterating and sharing insight. Hallelujah today. 
of what God's word says today, of the instructions that God's word outlines. Again, it is not uncommon for strangers to suffer persecution in strange land. We know that we will suffer persecution, but the book of Proverbs navigates and provides insight on how to steer, hallelujah, the course, how to stay steady, how to remain confident. And in order to do that, we must listen. We must pay close attention, not just with our ears, but with our eyes and our heart as well. We have to guard these instructions as a treasure. <laughs> guard the insights that Solomon was providing. Everything that God shares through his word, we too are to guard. Hallelujah. Do you think Solomon was giving insight to his son on how to successfully navigate through life? Do you think he would just share this insight to anybody? He was sharing it with his son. He was hopeful and taught his son, brought him up in proper ways so that he would receive. He would be able to understand. He would be able to digest what his father was saying. This is the purpose for us. Hallelujah. Seeking God by way of prayer by way of scripture, by way of Bible study, by way of Sunday service weekly. Hallelujah. So that we are in a mindset to receive. God provides insight because he loves us. He loves us. Hallelujah. And extends that insight through every road, through every crevice, through every path we chart in this life, through every turn, through every U-turn, through every left, through every right, God is there providing direction. Hallelujah, but the choice is yours. Will you ask him? Will you seek it? And then when you receive it, will you listen? There is nothing more frustrating than a person who is driving, receiving instruction and not paying attention. All the passengers are disgruntled. Hallelujah. As I often reference in this life, it is not just about you. Hallelujah. There are choices. There are decisions. There are roads. There are paths that you are following that not only impact you, but your offspring. Are you acting wise? Are you being prudent? Hallelujah. Do you have a roadmap? Is there a strategy for the direction and the movement and the motion that you're taking? If you cannot answer these questions positively, it's all right. God can help you today. He can place you back on the proper path. He can ensure that you make a U-turn, hallelujah, and get back and get out of the way of wickedness, hallelujah, to get away from the path of evil men. He is a present help in time of trouble, hallelujah. That 20th through 27th verse go on to note that God's instructions God's insight, God's direction, what Solomon was sharing was coming from the heart. His goal was to speak to the heart of the core of his son, God's direction, God's instruction. It speaks to our core. It speaks to our heart. Our heart is the very existence from which life flows. Hallelujah. God's instruction is health and, hallelujah, good health to all flesh, to those who read, all those we share, all those we enlighten about his goodness, his instruction is good health to all, hallelujah. Godly wisdom restores the body. It restores the mind. 
it restores the soul regardless of the age when we follow the direction and instruction of God, it restores the soul. Hallelujah. It keeps us. It guides us. It reinforces. Hallelujah. It reinvigorates. It revives who we are. His direction is sustaining. His direction, hallelujah, gives us hope from the heart streams the flow to the different regions of the mind and the body. Hallelujah. The heart keeps the source and the streams to our various parts aligned with God. <laughs> if the source is aligned, then everything that flows from it will also be aligned. Is your heart aligned with the instruction of God? Is your heart aligned with seeking guidance and direction from God? That 20, those verses 20 through 27 give warning to keep correct, corrupt talk out of your mouth. Do everything we can as believers to avoid trash talk and corruptive thinking. Focus strategize. In today's reality, we have to exist. Hallelujah. And we have to be real with ourselves, real with the path that we're on, and real with the God we serve. Because if we do not, we'll end up in a virtual reality, in a reality that is made up, in a reality that is fictitious, in a reality that will result in our being lost and without him. Hallelujah. We have distractions from every side. Someone or something is always ready to throw us off course. Robo calls, marketing calls. Everyone is calling these days for something. Hallelujah. <laughs> this ain't nothing but the devil. The devil, too, has a marketing plan. Hallelujah. But again, it is all for naught. We must seek God. We must seek his direction. And when we do, we will have the success that Solomon outlined to his son. That same success is available for us today as sons and daughters of the gospel. Successful athletes and competitors often will tell you it is necessary for, hallelujah, confident, successful wins to practice and to make perfect. Repetition makes perfect. Normally, you practice what you know works. People of God, I'm telling you, practice, hallelujah, Jesus. Practice God and everything he represents. Practice what is written in Proverbs, what is written from Genesis to Revelation, because it is proven to work. Hallelujah. I have talked too much today. <laughs> I have a lot more to say, but I am winding this down. Next week, we are discussing teaching values. Lesson number three. Our lesson number three will be captured out of Proverbs, the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 33. It will be Sunday, the 19th of September. Our prayer today, Lord God, help us to keep our eyes, to keep our ears and hearts and feet focused on following your path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please remember to give today. Your giving options are displayed at the bottom of the screen. And remember to join us promptly at 11 a.m. for a powerful, impactful word of God. Be blessed and enjoy your Sunday.